Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.12. We're going to be solving equations with fractions. Now, I'm going to underline this for a moment because I have to stress that the methods we're going to use only work for equations, which means they have an equal sign. So let's define an expression. An expression is just the sum or difference of terms. There is no equal signs. We cannot solve an expression. You can only solve an equation. If you don't see an equal sign, the only thing you can do is simplify. And that's a tool that we use for solving equations. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So to simplify this, I, I can combine these two terms by having a common denominator. We're just adding a fraction. So if I multiply this by 3 over 3, and think of that as a 2 over 1, I get 6 over 3. So let me write that here, 6 thirds, which is the same as 2. So I haven't changed its value. And now they have a common denominator, so I can add them. Well, if I add them, and that's not an equal sign, I'm just combining the terms, 6 plus 7x. They're not like terms, so I can just keep it as 6 plus 7x. Both of these are divided by the same denominator, 3. So all I've done was simplify it. I have not solved for x. This here. Now, in order to add or subtract, we have to have a common denominator. And that's a tool we'll use when solving equations sometimes. But if we look at this, there's no equal sign. So I'm not going to find out what x is here. All I'm going to do is be able to write it as maybe a single fraction. And in order to do this, we have to have that common denominator. So a common denominator of 8 and 6, or at least the least common denominator, since both of these have a factor of 2, well, it's actually going to be 24. Because this one needs a factor of 3. This one needs a factor of 4. And if we multiply those, we get 24. So this is going to have a common denominator of 24. So how do we go about that? Well, if we look at this one here, I'd have to multiply this by 3. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 3 times 9 is 27x. And we're going to over 24. And this is going to, here, we, to make this 24, I've got to multiply it by 4. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 4 times 5 is 20x and over 24. So they both have that 24 as a denominator. Now we notice these weren't like terms, but these ones are. So we can do this subtraction. 27x's minus 20x's would leave us with 7x's over 24. And we always check to see, can I reduce this? 7 and 24 have no common factors. So notice in both of these, I still don't know what x is. It is just a simplified expression. Expressions do not tell us what the values are. So now we're going to learn how to use these tools and apply them to equations. Now, equations that contain fractions, one way we can eliminate the fraction, if we see it in the most simplest form where we have a fraction times a variable equals a number, is we can multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient. What's the reciprocal of 1 third? Well, it would be 3. Because if I multiply 3 times 1 third, everything's going to reduce to 1. But I always have to remember, when it comes to equations, a tool we learned before is what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So if I'm multiplying this side by 3, I have to multiply this side by 3 as well. So 3 times 1 third is 1, or just 1x. We can think of it as reducing. 1 times 1 is 1. And 6 times 3 is 18. So we found a value for x. We know what x is. And because it's an equation, it has a great thing that we can use to know that we found the right answer. And that's check our work. Let's go to the original problem. 1 third times x equals 6. This was the original problem. But in place of that x, I'm going to find what my solution is. I'm going to evaluate. X is 18, so in place of my x, I put 18. Well, 1 third of 18 is the same thing as 18 divided by 3, which is 6. 6 equals 6. That's a true statement. 6 equals 6. It does not get any more true than that right there. Let's look at the next example. Well, what if my reciprocal isn't a nice whole number, not an integer? Well, 
<clears throat> I'm still going to multiply by the reciprocal, just like I did in that example. What is the reciprocal of 4 sevenths? Well, it would be 7 fourths. And just like this reduced to 1, this will also reduce to 1. The 4s will reduce. The 7s will reduce to 1. But what I do to one side of an equation, I always do to the other. So once we reduce this, x equals, now we can do this. Well, I look at that negative 8, and I see it can reduce a factor here. This would be 2, and that would reduce to 1. So we have 1s in our denominator. That's always good news. Negative 2, remember this sign belongs to this value. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. And now I can check my work. 4 sevenths times negative 14, that's my x value, so I put in this for the x, equals negative 8. This was the original problem. Now I'm evaluating it. Well, 7 goes into negative 14, negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. That's a true statement. I checked my work. I know that this is the answer. Let's look at another example. We can do the same thing here. But what if, like this, wasn't an integer, but this one is an integer? The first one was a fraction, and we ended up multiplying by an integer. Well, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Now, we've got to be careful. This is a negative. So it belongs to that number. So its reciprocal must also be negative. So I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal. Instead of negative 4, it would be negative 1 over 4. And I'm going to use parentheses just to keep things a little neater. Now, if we think of this over 1, a negative times a negative is positive. And the 4's will reduce. And 1 over 1 is still 1. So this becomes 1. 1 fourth of 4 is 1. So we just have z. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I multiply by a negative 1 fourth. So we assess a negative times a negative, or an even amount of negatives, 2 in this case, is a positive. And then we can do some reducing. 4 and 12 can reduce. So we have 3 over 25, 1 over 1, which is just 1. I get 3 25ths, and we already assessed that it's going to be positive, 3 25ths. Let's check our work just to be sure. Negative 4 times 3 25ths, evaluate for that z, has to equal negative 12 25ths. Well, let's see what happens here. We think of this as negative 4 over 1. A negative times a positive is a negative. 4 times 3 is 12 over 1 times 25 is 25. Well, negative 12 fifths is negative 12 fifths. We get that true statement. I like to call it, it is what it is, because that's what it is. So we know that this is right. So we have found the solution to this equation.